If you're listening to this podcast, that means you love Japanese games like me. And you know where I get mine? SuperRetroBros.org. They import so you guys don't have to. You can get import requests. So if you want any specific game from Japan, they can sort you out. They can hook you up. In addition to that, they've got loyalty programs, which you'll be hearing throughout the episode today, as well as console bundles. If you just want to get make your life easier, they've got promos going on at the moment, console bundles. You could just go through what they've got on their website as well, specifically by genre, by console, or even by A to Z. They've got it all. So go and check them out, superretrobros.org. That's superretrobros.org. Thanks to Super Retro Bros for sponsoring this episode of Galp. Hope you guys enjoy this episode. Galp. Hey guys and welcome to Galp. It's your boy Bish. Today we have a very special episode that I really wanted to do. I want to get back into retro gaming and as you guys know I did get my PS2 fixed so I went back and I relived some games of my youth. In a previous episode we did talk about Dynasty Warriors and things like that. I have also played some other games from the PS2 era like Sengoku Basara, like Samurai Warriors as well as some racing games which we are going to cover in future episodes of Galp. But today, I really wanted to dedicate some time to talk about SSX. That's a blast of the past. But before we get into the episode, I want to thank our main sponsor, Super Retro Bros. You're going to be hearing them throughout this episode in the ads, and it's going to be fantastic. So if you guys want to check them out, please check out their website. It's a service that I've used. It's a service that I love as well, and we wouldn't be doing this episode without them. So big shout out to them. Uh, Go and check them out. Oh yeah, SSX, a blast of the past. One of my favorite games of all time i did mention the story before that when we got the ps2 we got it uh, maybe a few days before release and oh my god this was one of the games that i spent playing the most especially getting it on the demo disc this is one of the original launch titles for the ps2 and it is amazing so just for you guys so you guys know ssx originally came out in the year 2000 for the playstation 2 in october and it was developed by ea canada and then ea sports had developed ssx tricky like i remember this game was on the ps2 originally it then made its way in future series to the gamecube game boy advance xbox xbox 360 etc now i booted this game up more than 23 years later and it's fantastic genuinely to this day right and i'm playing it on my television i'm using composite cables i don't think the original ssx had into was it called interlacing but there's a mode that you can switch on that basically sets the ps2 to 480p and higher and stuff like that I wasn't even doing that and the graphics were amazing. It's a acquired taste. You can see some of my videos on my YouTube channel. Some people might not like it, but I think it was one of the best games to release at the time, especially for a child. Play this game. It was like if it was Peggy 3 or I don't think even had a Peggy rating because I don't think even the Peggy ratings existed back then, to be fair with you. It was rated E for everyone if you lived in the US. But yeah, it's amazing. It's a very amazing game. There wasn't that many characters. There's eight total playable characters. Mac Frazier, Moby Jones. You look at our winner baby moby from the uk love him one of my favorite characters in ssx elise riggs kaori nishidake i think her name is jürgen angerman i don't know how to pronounce his name jürgen or jürgen jp arsenal zoe Payne, hiro karamatsu the initial characters that are available to play from the beginning is moby elise and kaori uh, and the other ones are unlocked by earning gold medals first one earns jürgen and then jp zoe and then i've actually got all of the characters so that's great the one thing that i love about this game as well is that each character has their own sort of benefit some characters are more trick based some characters are more uh, speed and racing and things like that and some are freestyle like a kind of all around a character so for example i always see mac and kaori as your trick characters because they have shorter boards does it make them better probably not but at least in the initial game you kind of get that sense of oh my god these are you know much better characters for tricks because most of their boards are shorter they do have alpine boards and they do have um, regular size boards as well Uh, Elise, Moby and Zoe tend to be your more like mid-range characters and then uh, Jürgen and Hiro are your more like um, 
speed more racing type characters there is pros and cons to using each one depending on the course like for example tokyo megaplex that's a trick course but it's also there for racing so you really either want to use a mid-size board or a shorter board i tend to use shorter boards at that stage mainly because they're a lot easier to maneuver and so i kind of prefer characters like mac and kaori because of that at least in the initial ssx so very interesting thing is that the game in Japan is called Extreme Racing SSX, which I didn't <laughs> didn't know if that was actually, I don't even know where the name came from. Um, another very interesting thing, which I didn't know, I'm only looking at the wiki to be fair with you, was that the executive producer and creative leader of the game was a Steve Red Schaffner, who was the inventor of the Olympic snowboard event called Border Cross, which served as an imp- inspiration for this game, which is insane. The fact that this game exists was just amazing, right? And and it was a good thing that it stayed on the PS2. Later on, we're going to talk about the kind of failings of SSX into the future, but and like with its reboot and things like that and stuff that I do want to see in the future. But this was a very simple game. It was just about racing and doing tricks and racing against your friends. It had really lovely tracks and stuff that you'd never see in real life. I don't know. Like I never wanted to do snowboarding because of this game. Like this game didn't make me want to go in and do like snowboarding or skiing or anything like that. But I did want to experience that through the game and it was one of those games that i would play when it was raining or when it was snowing and i you know especially in the winter you really want to play this game I, at least as a kid i would wake up early i would wake up 6 a.m to play this game and this is also another game that after school i'd go out we'd play it as a family you know my mom my dad my sisters even and friends after school would come over and play this game because it was great you had a fantastic track as well as in musical tracks like shake what your mama gave you like a lot of this the tracks in this game are bloody fantastic a gin and sin the even the initial song that used to freak me out as a kid because you have this sort of ominous feeling you know it's called prism you might hear it um the one that's like welcome to ssx ssx and there's like this echo in the behind of it but there's some really nice songs in here as well like like i mentioned shake what your mama gave you gin and sin song for dot there's a lot of great songs i know a lot of people used to play this game mainly from the demo disc Right. And I know a lot of people, I think it was Elysium Alps was on the demo disc. That was the only stage that was on the demo disc. I think there was a trick stage on Snow Dream as well. And to be fair with you, I know a lot of people have kind of gotten into that and it was very interesting. But I kind of forgot about the game after a while, to be fair with you, because there's only so much you can do in the original SSX. There was a trick book. Once you've completed the trick book, once you've got all the stuff in there, the replayability in SSX, at least for me, has always been in bringing your friends over and actually playing split screen with them. We lost that when we moved forward in time in future titles, I think. By the time we got to SSX Deadly Descent, as I like to call it, but it's SSX 2012, the reboot, we kind of lost that. We did get online multiplayer literally right before the game died. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I'm gonna go and talk about the second ssx game ssx tricky personally one of my favorite ssx games to ever exist because this one was the first ea sports boot so it was published under ea sports big but developed by ea canada so a lot more characters in this game a lot more diverse a lot more varied as well as the fact that this game got released on gamecube and the original xbox and apparently on the game boy advance i can't comment on the game boy advance version but this game released on the playstation 2 on november 30th in europe it also got a japanese release and a korean release which i didn't know about until recently and while i was um, doing research for this podcast episode i came across a youtuber called queenie i believe they also do twitch streams as well under the name queen youngie it's really rare to see content creators solely focusing on ssx and if you go and look at their channel they've got some really nice videos they're not many views so please show them love if you do love of SSX. It is a great video, a series that they do. They compare the original SSX tracks to SSX Tricky. Like I'm looking at their channel now, they have SSX versus SSX Tricky for Untracked, for Snow Dream, for Aloha Ice Jam, and just going through the game really for archival purposes, which I thought was incredibly interesting. And they're kind of keeping this community alive. They are a small YouTuber when it comes to SSX because SSX is quite a niche game now. But honestly, there's some really cool stuff on it on their channel. So please go and check them out one thing that i did learn about their channel because i was looking for kaiori videos and things like that was a video that mentioned it's one video for the ntsc 
Korean version of the game, which was released in 2002, around the time that it was released in Japan. But this is a Korean language version of the game. There are a few notable differences which they've mentioned out, hence why I'm giving them a shout out. So shout out to you, Queenie. The Sensei ranking got changed to Coach ranking. Tokyo Megaplex is just known as Megaplex, although Yuri's voice actress does say Tokyo Megaplex. And you might hear me say Yuri. Yuri is a character in the game that replaces Kaori, voiced by a Korean actress. I don't know the name of the actress, I'm afraid, but it is quite interesting because I know that SSX Tricky had some regional changes. For example, Mac in the European version of the game is known as Marty and he speaks German. So that's his German cousin. It kind of feels like the Stig on Top Gear. It's his German cousin. It's basically the exact same character looks exactly the same costumes are exactly the same it's just the voice is changed and the voice lines as well and the interactions as well for the european version of the game in the same way that this korean version has some changes for that market like i mentioned tokyo megaplex just renamed to megaplex snow dreams location has been changed from japan to korea and as well as the, the rival cut scenes are also in korean as well i've also noticed that the introductions in the game are korean for the introductions for the stages and things like that and i thought that was really interesting the fact that they modified the game to fit that region and it is quite interesting in terms of localization to be fair with you because we kind of see that a lot as well with a lot of media whether it may be anime or some games that they change certain things to adapt to that region and it's not a bad thing it is quite interesting as well to see that exist and looking at yuri's voice actress i kind of prefer yuri to kayori's voice actress i to be fair with you i kind of felt like kayori's japanese voice was pretty low effort as a kid i thought it was interesting because you know this is like maybe the first time i've actually been exposed to cultures outside of my own i know it sounds really weird but when you're being raised in the 90s in the uk you know and especially in a, in a tighter knit community you don't always see other cultures and you know I, my neighborhood wasn't the most diverse so to see other characters from different places whether that is marty who's from germany or you know characters that are from the us and you know moby you're looking at a winner baby or any characters in general kaiori or yuri and the in case of the korean version it is just quite inspiring and that's always a lovely thing that i did like about ssx is that you could kind of relate to the characters you had your favorites like personally for me in tricky there was a lot more characters tricky we got to see characters like elise mac returned in the form of marty in the european version kaiori or Yuri, depending on what version of the game you're playing. Zoe Payne, Moby Jones, Jean-Paul, aka JP. These are all returning characters. Your new characters, Simon Stark, Eddie Wachowski, Sia Owens, Luther, Marisol, Brody. So we did see additional characters. And to be fair with you, I fell in love with them didn't like eddie because eddie you know didn't like his moveset he you know it was a bit and he was a bit annoying you know the fact that he was like wearing all this kind of stuff from the 70s and i was like oh cringe i didn't like it sia loved sia's character wasn't a fan of luther because he was a bit of a dick marisol great character as well never used to play as marisol a lot because i don't know if you guys had the same experience but especially if you had siblings they'll be like you can't play this character that's my favorite character you're not allowed to play as them so there were some characters that i never really got to play as as a child right or like for example uh, you know i wasn't allowed to play as elise or zoe or jp like those were my sister's characters right can't play as them and then i was like okay you can't play as simon simon is my guy you can't play as i only had like simon you can play as anyone else but don't play as simon that's my guy and i love simon because he was just so crazy right i was like wow i was kind of living vicarious through simon because you can't live like that right he was kind of unhinged as a character and i was like whoa that's so cool he had these really lovely spikes in his hair and he had these tattoos and i thought that was pretty badass he was a badass character even his uber tricks and that's another thing that ssx tricky introduced uber tricks now what is an uber trick an uber trick basically when you fill your trick meter your boost meter tricks equals boost boost equals speed remember that so when you hit your tricks meter all the way to the red portion it will allow you then to do uber tricks and you'd hear the run the mc it's tricky music you do a trick you press one of the triggers and square or whatever depending on your control scheme and it would do this unique trick not all of the tricks were unique mind you but the ones that were unique i think you had to use both of the triggers and press a button and it would do this unique trick for you each character had a unique trick right so simon had the guillotine marty's was walking the dog which is 
you know, I think Moby, I think his trick was the Superman. I can't remember, but each character had a unique trick. And I thought that was really fantastic. And it kind of set apart all of these characters. It gave them personalities. And to be fair with you, each trick matched the personalities of the characters. And there was a lot of customization in this game because we saw board customization return. And by board and character customization, I mean unlockables. So you were able to unlock depending on doing the world circuit, if you got gold medals and, and you'd kind of advance your ranking, you'd get costumes, right? And if you did more tricks and if you filled up that trick book, you'd get more boards. So there were some really interesting things in the game that, you know, your boards progressed with you, right? Your boards would level up as well. So you were able to like assign what sort of attribute you want to add to the boards, which was very interesting because I we'd never seen that in previous games. And that was just fantastic. That was a lovely thing that I liked in the game, especially for a game that came out in 2001, one year later than the original SSX. So a lot of development had went into it. Like I mentioned, the two new tracks were Garibaldi and Alaska the other ones were being remixed from previous games to basically allow uber moves to work oh another thing is if you successfully filled those letters the lovely thing that would happen is that you get unlimited boost for a particular time and it would expire after a certain amount of time so that it's not unfair it was a real challenge on some stages if you were on something like Tokyo Megaplex it was easy right? Easy to fill up your tricks. But if you're doing it on a stage like Alaska or a stage like Aloha Ice Jam, it would be very difficult to do because there's a lot of ice and you really need to rely on getting speed in terms of boost, right? Especially on the ice. You want to get that advantage. You want to zoom past by boosting. And the problem is you can't boost unless you do tricks, like I mentioned before. So you had to find that balance. A lovely thing is that the game introduced a rivalry system. So if a character is friendly with an AI, then they'll treat them well. They're not going to attack them. They're going to help you in some cases. And in some cases, they might knock down other players, which is fantastic, right? But it's all based on that. And that's quite smart because you can mess them up, right? Let's say Kyori is good friends with Mac. As an example, I can't quite remember it, but let's say that they're good friends. Mac won't hurt you. But in certain stages, if you just think, you know what? Fuck you, Mac. I'm just going to knock you down so that I can get my tricky meter up straight away. That's another thing. If you knock down characters your boost goes up so you don't need to necessarily rely on tricks to do that but if you did knock him down the next stage he might become neutral so before he was nice to you he might be neutral if you keep on doing it by the end of the world circuit he's gonna be aggressive to you he's gonna try and take you down so it's very very interesting and that was the first time we saw this rival system exist we've seen it also kind of go forward in future games like ssx3 like on tour and even ssx deadly descent the next game that i am going to be talking about is ssx3 and this is a game that i personally spent the most time with alone the reason being is because you can still play this game split screen but it was more so designed to be a single player player game it's you in the mountain but the idea behind the game is that there's three peaks on this massive mountain and you get challenged throughout the peaks you level up your character it's still the characters within the game but in ssx3 you do have some returning characters elise mac and not marty but marty does return as a cheat character kaori zoe moby and simon they're your returning characters and you've got four new characters allegra griff nate and vigo now, like I mentioned, there were cheat characters and they are playable. They don't have unique animations. So and they don't have voice acting or equipables. Yes, I did mention equipables because this game had a lot of character customization. I believe they kind of built on it a little bit more for SSX on tour. But we'll talk about that in a bit. The interesting thing about it was that the game had a lot of cheat characters. Like I mentioned, fantasy, snowboarders, snowmen playing as a beaver, a cow, even stretch from nba street there was a lot of crossovers there i think you can also play as luther jp eddie um hero and jürgen were also playable i believe but like i mentioned they didn't have much customization they were just used as cheats you can also buy marty as well for forty thousand. i think on peak three you or you could type in a cheat i believe back to the future was the cheat there was a section in the game where you could type in cheats to get money and things like that and this is obviously before achievements so you can basically ruin the game for yourself by just getting unlimited money and buying whatever you want and i think there was also cheats that allowed you to lock everything but i think for me what was the fun behind that game was just going in and unlocking everything and spending the money on on boards and leveling up characters and doing a really cool things you also had uh, dj 
Razel didn't make it for the next game and was replaced by DJ Atomica. But yeah, DJ Atomica was very interesting because as you traveling from peak to peak, you kind of did that on your free time effectively. You could quick travel or you could snowboard your way there and sometimes you'd see some really interesting things you pick up these tokens that also once again did appear in future games like these little tokens that will give you five grand and things like that and you can use it to spend in the shop which is really cool so you're rewarded for exploring you'd also be able to check out the tracks if you're exploring you just go through and play the track without anyone else there like a free ride almost and see where are all of the hidden passages and really get to know the tracks a lot more and that's what i like about them some tracks once again are inspired by tricky they don't necessarily return but they are inspired by them and i really did love ssx3 it added in a lot more uber tricks it added in the ability to buy other characters uber tricks as well and assign them so if you didn't like kairi's uber tricks or if you didn't like zoe's uber tricks you can give them simon's ubers you can give them moby's ubers and it was just fantastic as a game i would say it's one of the best versions of ssx to play as a beginner especially if you're not necessarily into the aspect of a multiplayer gaming this game also did have network play on the ps2 i'm not too sure about the xbox version if it did get xbox live support it might have did i don't know but yeah the game was structured slightly different so you had um race freestyle and free ride on these three peaks your beginning peak was quite simple your peak two was interesting and then peak three and in between peaks as well you do this thing where it would be a race down the peak of the mountain you get a challenge let's say peak one i think was mac and then peak two was nate i can't remember who peak three was but peak one you challenge mac i think after you get like place in top three or get a medal basically for every race or every freestyle then you get like an invitation from mac or whoever the head of the peak is to challenge and then you can progress onto the next peak and i thought that was really cool i think the end of the game is basically you traveling and racing through the whole peak one-on-one -on -one. and you can do that as well if you really wanted to with a friend or with other players and i think that was really cool i never got the opportunity to do network play genuinely and i know that there was a lot of people that bought the hard drive adapter for the playstation 2 that allowed you to plug in an ethernet port i never had the option to do that even though i did have broadband back then and i did have the internet i did have access to decent internet to play online games but the ps2 for me was never really an online console some people might disagree with me but i never felt that was the case now the reason why i love ssx3 so much is that character customization right i can buy whatever i want for my characters new tops new bottoms new shoes new boards new hats new backpacks even as well as tricks or if i don't want that and i just want to juice my character up as much as i can i can actually pay to increase the character's stats through that progression which is fantastic so you can play the game however you want if you want to play through the using the shittiest board you can there is actually a board in this game and i just got reminded of it now there's a board in this game that's literally a cardboard box flattened out if you wanted to do that you could do that if you wanted to use a really cool board you can as well and i think there was also integrated sponsorships within the game either that or it was like like nods to it like for example dnl if you flip it the other way around it's seven up I don't know if that is actually a 7up sponsorship and they kind of had some fun with it. If that was the case, that's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. But you had some really interesting things like that with the game, genuinely. Like there was a lot of really cool things in there. Conquering the mountain and kind of using that. Oh, it was just a good game to be fair with you like the amount of time that i spent trying to beat my scores trying to win races and just sometimes doing tricks that's the lovely thing about this game because you had those freestyle stages and there was this lovely one that had like a half pipe not all of them did and you could actually stay there for ages and ages and just get all the tricks that you want to do monster tricks was another thing as well where if you're doing multiple ubers and one trick combo which was very difficult to pull off you'd basically double or triple or 10 times your combo which is insane especially those were the way to get easy gold medals in freestyle events as well as hitting those multiplier stars and really doing some awesome things another thing is that this game had licensed music the other games i don't think did they kind of reused music from ssx1 and things like that but this one actually did it got me into like the black ips into like other tracks i don't know if you guys remember like way away by yellow card or play it loud like there was a lot of tracks that were just 
was fantastic and really fit the tone of the game but also at the same time led into games like on tour we're going to talk about on tour in a bit but i just want to continue on ssx3 a little bit because i'm loving this conversation genuinely i'm loving it ssx3 was a fantastic game and i don't know if you guys know this i actually bought an xbox series x i spent like 500 pounds on an xbox only to play ssx3 and there's a special reason behind that I wasn't able to get my PS2 working and I wanted to experience this game and I've been doing my research for years and years and years and I'd found out that it was on the backwards compatibility program for the original Xbox because it was, I believe, an original Xbox game and Microsoft, I believe, worked with EA to sort of basically revamp the game, give it new textures so that the game can run in 4K and the game does run in 4K at 60 frames a second. It is genuinely the best way to play SSX three the control scheme is slightly different on xbox so if you are a ps2 player it is going to be slightly different using that xbox one controller or xbox series x controller whatever it wants to be but it's a great game literally i spent 500 pounds to buy a seven pound game on the xbox store and that just shows that i was so dedicated to ssx just to you know play that game just to play that game again that I paid 500 pounds to get an Xbox just to play it. That That's dedication, guys. I really do hope that uh, EA and Microsoft kind of continue that backwards compatibility program and kind of give new life into games like SSX Tricky because that was also playable on the original Xbox, I believe, as well as games like SSX On Tour and um, SSX Deadly Descent. Although SSX Deadly Descent... You basically can play it in 1080p. That game was released on the 360. And you can actually play it on Game Pass. And it is part of the backwards compatibility program as well. So if you do have the disc, you can pop it in and just play the original SSX. Um, and play SSX 2012. We're just going to go on a little bit of an ad break. Enjoy these ads. And we'll be right back to talk about SSX on tour. If you find yourself buying a lot of imports from Japan, why not make your life easier by going to superretrobros.org? They've got a loyalty program where you earn points and exchange them for awesome discounts. You get money off the site, depending on how many points that you get. I believe it's uh, 10 points for every one pound spent. Pretty awesome. They also have free delivery to the UK. And you know what? You don't just need to be in the UK. They ship worldwide. That's pretty awesome. One of my favorite things about Super Retro Bros is that it's made importing very easy because they have a lot of stuff in stock as well. If you're a big fan of Shin Sangoku Muso or any of the Muso games, they've got them all there and for very good prices as well. Like I've noticed that they've got Shin Sangoku Muso 5 special, which is Dynasty Warriors 6 for the PlayStation 2, a game that I've been trying to get my hands on and it's been difficult in the past to get these games overseas as other services that charge you like 40 bucks for a game. They've got it listed on their website for 10 pounds. That is a really, really good price. Uh, they've also got other Muso games on there. I'm looking at uh, Shin Sangoku Muso 2, which is Dynasty Warriors 3. They've got it for four pounds and they're in top notch condition. Believe me, I've bought from them before just to try them out even before we got sponsored by them and you guys know this i wouldn't be suggesting any company to you guys unless i know that i've personally used it and i really love them so it's got the bish seal of approval check them out if you want your muso games if you want your import requests go and check them out right now superretrobros.org that's superretrobros.org Back onto the episode. On Tour was also released on the Xbox as well as the GameCube. The GameCube version did have secret characters, which I thought was very interesting, and I'm going to mention them now. Your secret characters was Luigi, Mario, Princess Peach. Okay, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I genuinely don't know. But it was interesting that you actually had those special characters for the Nintendo GameCube version of the game. You got returning characters like Elise, Mac, Kauri, uh, Zoe, Simon, and Allegra as well as nate you got some new characters including tyson sid and sky characters that i 
don't think returned in future games but the game is pretty similar to ssx3 in terms of control scheme and the whole point of the game is the same really it's snowboarding down a mountain gaining points for tricks after each tricks you get a boost bar etc so the, the, the main idea behind the game is the same you're still earning money there's still that level of customization there is higher levels of customization in this game because of custom created characters and this is something i didn't like about um on tour and i think a, a lot of people that may have not enjoyed this game was the fact that firstly the game had no online play in any of the versions of ssx on tour the multiplayer kind of felt very lazily put together you could still do split screen and you could still do other stuff and then okay there were some really cool things like there was a snowball fight mode and that's pretty cool but at the same time to me it didn't feel like ssx yes you can create your own character but what happened to the original character they were kind of pushed off to the sideline and they got insane redesigns which i will be honest with you i wasn't a big fan like they changed simon way too much and that wasn't the simon that i knew i knew simon had these lovely spikes in his head they i think they gave simon a pink mohawk and i was like this isn't the simon that i know you know like he felt different he looked different as well like simon was quite built this guy was quite thin characters look quite odd in this version of the game like the characters themselves look like they were made in the character creator and we didn't see moby like what happened to Mo moby was in every ssx game until this one i was like what the hell like i miss moby we were looking at a winner baby but i don't know what happened to the winner looking at the character design none of them looked like themselves right nate i'd say would look the most like nate kari she was you know somewhat recognizable same with allegra i couldn't recognize mac at all same with simon they didn't feel like their normal character designs and i think that's something that they kind of lost with onto in all fairness but don't get me wrong elise pretty much looks the same i think she just has shorter hair but yeah the game took a very interesting design to it it was supposed to be i don't know if it was supposed to be like punk or like rock sort of design there was a lot of mu the music had changed as well you kind of got out of that pop music that sort of uh, popular music and that sort of pop music and like r&b and that kind of stuff and hip-hop and it moved towards like heavy metal and like rock and that it was interesting it introduced me to a lot of different songs like iron maiden and stuff like that like i never listened to this music before and the fact that this game came out in 2005 i did grow up but i grew up a little bit by the time this game came out but it was just a shock to me and i did play it and i do remember some very fond memories but it wasn't a game that i got to enjoy with friends or family and i always kind of went back to play ssx3 or i went back to play ssx tricky because those games still have that sort of idea in my mind that oh i'm there's always those games if i don't like this game there's always tricky there's always three and in fact there's always the original that i can go back and play with my family and friends but this was kind of interesting because you didn't have uber trick instead you did have this thing called monster tricks which are the exact same moves as well as the fact that you have skis so in the beginning you can choose whether you want snowboard or skis this was a game that i hated snowboarding in because of the fact that skis existed and i thought that was a really cool idea to introduce skiing because it gave it more control oddly enough especially if you are you know going down the mountain it kind of gave me that idea of the alpine boards but they're a lot easier to control because you have effectively two really skinny boards tricks were horrible to do on them and even the characters didn't have some of their original tricks which was a bit annoying but yeah the customization might have been the thing that hurt the game and you had these things called events and shreds and all that kind of stuff but i really didn't care much for the game and i don't think the game had much love because it felt like such a departure basically you had this chart system where you'd increase in the charts with every event and your main goal is to get to number one i don't think i've actually completed this game and actually gotten to number one because it feels like the exact same thing over and over again right you're you're challenging someone bam that's it you do shreds you do events bam go forward like i didn't feel that there was a lot to achieve in this game right you buy what you want you level up but it didn't feel like i was getting anywhere fast like i went back to my original uh, save file from all those years ago almost 20 years ago now and i think i only got to like 40 in the charts like i didn't even finish the game and going back to it now it was okay but it wasn't what i'd expected some characters were cool like sid i did want to see sid return i think he did return for blur but there were some interesting characters there i just felt like it was kind of a spin-off technically it's the fourth this ssx game but it felt like a weird spin-off in my personal opinion now moving on to ssx blur this was a game that i decided i'm gonna get a nintendo wii for and i did this game came out two years after that in 2007 released on the 16th of march 
in the EU. So SSX Blur kind of follows similar to previous titles, um, similar to SSX3. You kind of work up three uh, peaks on the mountain, participating in races, tricks and stuff like that, as well as a new slalom event and prizes. I can't remember that, but it did exist. And you can choose from uh, traditional snowboards or skis that were introduced from on tour. And I thought that was really cool because the game uses the Wii remote and nunchuck and motion controls because that was the thing back then with the Wii. Motion controls. Wow, every game needed them. You control movement with the analog stick on the nunchuck as well as your speed um, and jumping with the nunchuck. And then while you're in the air, you use the Wii remote and the nunchuck to draw out tricks like drawing out an X or drawing out a heart. And that would do your Ubers basically, which was pretty cool. You can also use the Wii remote to throw snowballs, which I thought that was really cool um, during a race and things like that, which is something I think came also from on tour. You can also, regarding the Uber tricks, you can uh, earn additional ones within the career mode by collecting icons for Uber tricks. It was basically like an un unlockable. Uh, for this game, we got to see Elise, Mac, Kaori, Zoe. You're looking at a winner, baby. Moby Jones, JP, Simon Stark returns, Allegra from SSX3, Griff Simmons, as well as Sky from on tour. By the way, there was new characters, Felix, as well as Maya. This game didn't do so well in terms of um, scores and things like that. It kind of felt a lot like SSX3 kind of dumbed down for the Wii. It used a lot of the similar designs and modified tracks from 3 and SSX on tour, which is quite interesting to be fair with you. I will say this, IGN did praise the level of depth with the motion controls, but basically stated that the challenge restricts the game to hardcore audiences only. And some people were disappointed that there were reused tracks from previous games, to be fair with you. I did remember that pulling off Uber tricks were incredibly difficult because of relying on the Wiimote and the nunchuck and doing that motion. It wouldn't always pick up the trick and that would sometimes fuck up for the player and it wasn't necessarily the best thing. And there wasn't much to say, but to be fair with you, I kind of prefer Blur to, to Ontor. And I think the reason being is because Ontor had just looked nicer like the music was interesting to be fair the characters looked very dumbed down like i didn't really like the character designs as well and the fact that you you didn't have many boards to choose from as well it was like a very dumbed down version of the game but it was still you know pleasing to look at your characters looked like children basically the art style wasn't necessarily the best kind of like sims almost but it was a fun game to me it kind of felt like an ssx game that was designed for newcomers and basically for children not to say that's an insult because the original game had a lot of kids playing it. The character designs look a bit odd. I'm looking at a video now. Shout out to Queenie because they're like literally an archival resource for SSX. But yeah, a lot of the stuff looking at Queenie's video. I didn't even boot this game on the Wii. Looking at Queenie's channel, I saw that they were playing it um, using a dolphin emulator. So they were using a PS3 controller, which to be fair with you, looks like the best way to play. If they did end up releasing this game on the PlayStation 3 at the time, I think it would have been a lot easier to play might have been even a redeeming factor for the series um because it's a decent game it's more of the same but it is a decent game it's just the motion controls kind of threw it off a little bit i will say that we're gonna go on an ad break yes i know and we are gonna talk about ssx deadly descent aka ssx 2012 as well as what i want to see for the future of ssx this episode of the podcast is brought to you by super retro bros so this is a company that i was made aware of recently when purchasing Sengoku Basara, I bought all of the Sengoku Basara games on eBay and then I realized oh these guys have a website so I went out and I checked them out I will say this these guys are bloody amazing because they offer free delivery into the UK they also ship worldwide what is lovely about them they also got a loyalty program I forgot to mention that but what I love about them is the fact that if you've ever missed out on rarer items and you wanted a specific import for your collection and you can't get it anywhere you can get it from them directly there's a import request form on their website where you can decide what you want to get you don't need to fast around with proxy services and this and that to get stuff from japan they can get it for you they've got suppliers in japan and they love to help you to build your gaming collection they deal with all the importing so you don't have to it's an excellent service i will say this because otherwise we wouldn't be able to import certain games for the podcast right in addition to that they've already got games in stock that you could just buy it was very easy for me to find games like sengoku basara shin sengoku muso as well as wonderful japanese games on the sony PS1, PS2, PS3, PSP, 
PSP even, Sega Saturn, Mega Drive, Mega CD, Dreamcast, and they sell consoles as well. If you want to buy retro consoles from them, or if you want to buy rare consoles and things. Genuinely, their prices are really good. Like Sengo Kubasara, you can find them online on eBay for like 50 to 100 pounds. And it's like, oh, it's a bit of a ripoff. These guys actually sell it for very, very reasonable prices. Like I bought all of the Sengo Kubasara games and I paid less than 50 pounds which is insane because I have four games here for less than 50. It is pretty legit. And by supporting them, you'd be supporting a local business, right? They're not a big conglomerate. They're local business. They're passionate for what they do and they go above and beyond. These guys import so you don't have to. If you want to learn more, go to superretrobros.co.uk for all of your games, your consoles and your trading cards. That is superretrobros.co.uk. Thank you, Super Retro Bros, for sponsoring this episode of the podcast back onto the episode okay we are back um big thanks to our sponsor super retro bros for that lovely ad hope you guys enjoyed it these guys support us a lot on the show and you know what if you wanted a japanese copy of ssx i'm pretty sure that you can do it on their site if you go to super retro bros.org or slash import dash requests you can actually import games from japan i really want to see if you're if you can if you're able to like get a korean copy using them that might be something worth to ask to be fair with you but genuinely i've used a service before and i really do love it anyway ssx deadly descent when this game was shown at e3 especially i think at that time it was like we've been waiting for a new ssx right we were waiting for an ssx on the ps3 xbox 360 and as soon as we got it i was like yeah boy i was so happy genuinely and i was so hyped for the game because i was thinking yes this series is no longer dead right it's continuing i'm tearing up right now because i remember those emotions and genuinely fantastic it was a fantastic game it got really good reviews as well and it kind of brought back a series that we've never seen in a while there was a lot of things that were missing though and i will mention this the game brought back a lot of characters it brought back your classic characters aged them up a bit as well change their looks you got elise you got mac who returns i believe mac is kind of like in between his on tour design with the stripes like his base design as well as his ssx3 so he's kind of like in between the two the best of mac basically moby jones looking at a winner baby i'm sorry moby is like one of my favorites zoe Payne returns curry as well as well as simon stark and eddie and griff griff has aged quite a bit in this game he's no longer a child we also see new characters like tay Alex, Ty, and Travis Rice. I don't know if you guys know this, but Travis is actually a professional snowboarder. He actually got a cameo in this game. I think it was a Red Bull collab. When you bought the game on the 360, and I think on the PlayStation 3, you got a downloadable code for him. One thing that really pissed me off about this game, I think, if I can remember correctly, there was like a sort of battle pass, if that makes sense. There was an online pass to get the game, which was very, very interesting. These characters characters were available so eddie and travis were available as pre-orders for the game limited facebook app codes i didn't even know that but you can also get the classic characters via mount eddie and classic characters pack basically it allowed you to have the classic character designs as well as mount eddie tracks which were heavily inspired by tricky why was mount eddie so important as a track it's because the original deadly descents i'm calling it deadly descents because you know it was a great game and that was the original name for it at least when it was shown at e3 that's what i'm always going to refer it to but it was very interesting because of the game's features right you had equipment to worry about it was a very strategic ssx game right because you were going and traveling through certain areas like mount fuji i think that was also dlc um for like a pre-order bonus you had Mount Fuji, you had like, I think Mount Kilimanjaro. These were real places in the world that you can actually travel to and, and snowboard in. And that was interesting, but it took away from the sort of classic ssx dna like there was no pipe dream style stages no classic style stages and that's what people were missing another thing that a lot of things that people were missing was 
multiplayer. We thought that, okay, we're going to get a proper multiplayer thing in this game, a proper multiplayer mode, but we didn't get that. And in fact, it was added in as a DLC, which was a bit disappointing. So the game released in 2012, as you guys know, in Feb, or around March for Europe. But then we had to wait like six months or a year. I think in August, they released a patch with new game modes, one called 321 Go, which basically added in live multiplayer gameplay. So it was basically online multiplayer with up to five players to compete simultaneously in a race or trick event which was interesting but that should have came up on launch I, there's no doubt about it this is one of the things that killed the game the fact that we didn't get that on launch and we didn't get free ride on launch as well we waited six months to get free ride that basically allows player to ride down the mountain at any time without any time limits and it basically allows you to repeat the track as well which is fantastic and there was no ghost that you had to race against i hated this racing against ghost business because it did add an element of multiplayer because you're racing against your friend's ghosts um and you could see the ghost and it was was, you could see you know where they where they've made their mistakes where they've fallen and you learn from it and it was really interesting but you can keep that as well as have an actual multiplayer mode but it didn't have that a lovely thing as well is that you could place like those little stars and like little emblems that basically if someone gets it they get cash but if someone doesn't get it you kind of just accumulate cash and cash and cash as you go and i've done that now and i've went back to the game recently and i've now i've just got like millions of dollars in cash because no one's played the game in such a long time and yeah it's a disappointing game it's interesting i love it i spent a lot of time with it but once again the fact that it didn't contain online multiplayer until six months after was disappointing and by that time a lot of people had stopped playing you know and we were still waiting for mount eddie it's basically reminiscent inspired by previous games including large jumps half pipes fireworks billboards colorful environments right environments that were warm environments that were welcoming and you know nostalgic even and we were hoping ea would release more dlc i was hoping that ea on top of that would be like hey we're gonna create remade versions of garibaldi of aloha ice jam on like a separate you can maybe even include it on mount eddie pack right have a separate mountain where you have a bunch of different snowboarding places like artificial snowboarding tracks because these were like in the previous games they were designed for the ssx super circuit they weren't real locations like what i thought would be interesting if if they made like a location for like somewhere like dubai for example or like abu dhabi right because they have a lot of man-made snowboarding and skiing tracks and stuff like that and it was interesting yeah to play on the alps and to play on mount fuji but it was still quite lonely as well because the races didn't feel as tense because they weren't lapped they were weren't like familiar courses there were so many options that you could do you could take so many different ways and in fact tricks if you're doing like a trick event it was so difficult because yes yeah, some stages had rails but then at the same time you'd be grinding on ice and you'd have to try a, a good opportunity to do uber tricks and the uber tricks were fantastic in this game and they were a lot easier to do and you had a lot of customization in terms of your suits your boards as well as equipment which was really cool so you had a wingsuit i think you had other pieces of equipment as well i'm trying to find out because i haven't played this game in a while so i think that was the, the the main reason why they called it deadly descents was because you had like really interesting things like flashlights if you were going into darkness or freezing right avalanches you had st certain things to protect you from avalanches pickaxes to aid in turning on icy surfaces which i thought was fantastic because there was so many different challenges that you could do in this game and i think what the game kind of missed out on was they should have implemented challenges like into the game itself like have an icy stage and be like complete this stage without the use of pickaxes right complete the stage without a wingsuit or something like that like give us these little challenges that we can do kind of like in games like samurai warriors or dynasty warriors right where you'll get a challenge even warriors orochi you get a challenge like defeat 10 enemies or 10 uh, enemies in the space of a minute or something like that you know that's something that i want to see right or the fact that you can higher altitudes you get lower oxygen right so you might need to bring an oxygen tank with you but you have to think about what you can and what you can't bring right because there's certain things that you can bring multiples of but there's certain things that you can't like for example i don't think like i think on certain stages and at least initially you had to kind of worry about am i going to bring a wingsuit or am i going to need an oxygen tank 
do I need a pickaxe or do I need a flashlight to light up dark areas? And that kind of added a level of strategy to the game. And I think that was one of my favorite points of the game. But what was very interesting about the Deadly Descents was that each one had a theme and each one had like a special rider for it, right? So trees, gravity, where you're kind of using your wingsuits and things like that. Icy stages, thin air stages, right? Where the pressure is higher. So you can't, you know, you, there's less oxygen in the air. So you need to bring that uh, gas mask with you, that oxygen tank avalanches where you kind of bring in your body armor cold um things like that there's like so many different things or rocky uh, uh, situations or situations in which you need a headlamp like there are some stages that are incredibly dark and you do need need a headlamp otherwise you're not really gonna survive and it might be difficult to even do tricks on them so yeah it's basically the game follows a world tour dj atomica returns basically nine of the best riders in the world are gathered together and basically the big bad guy in this game is griff who was a kid in the previous games but now he's like a full grown adult so you have to beat him he's a bit he's the big baddie you have to beat him in this game conquer the world first i know that sounds really cringe but basically you're going around different locations beating griff and beating the other guys and basically be the king of the mountain i don't know if that makes sense but this game was genuinely like a fantastic game and there was a lot going on and i think that there's a lot that could have been implemented and i think genuinely ea should have done more to support this game like literally only six months of support come on ea i kind of think about where we're going like are we gonna see we didn't see an ssx game on the ps4 but i mentioned before microsoft did go in and basically remastered ssx3 for the uh backwards compatibility program on the xbox and ssx deadly descent is available on game pass and is also part of backwards compatibility program so i want to know what's going on does ea have any plans with this series in the future are we gonna see a ps5 ssx game are we gonna see a game like this return to form or are we gonna see a game sort of continue from ssx deadly descent like don't get me wrong i love ssx deadly descent and it could have been the perfect ssx game but it was missing online multiplayer it was missing split screen i know a lot of people don't necessarily care about split screen in this day and age but it's part of ssx dna it's part of its heritage right ssx was a game that was born and bred on the playstation because of its features that made it unique right look at games like dynasty warriors you know koei tried to remove split screen and they did with dynasty warriors 9 only to patch it in again that's what we want especially fans of the series i i'm not going to speak for all of the fans but i think bringing back split screen into ssx franchise as well as bringing in online multiplayer proper online multiplayer as well as bringing in classic stages and new weird and wacky stages i don't mind all of this deadly descent stuff i would still like to see that but i would still like to see more of what made ssx amazing that sort of ssx pedigree almost the stuff that made the game good uber tricks a split screen mode weird and wonderful characters and i think ea could do that ea sports big doesn't exist anymore and i don't think ea canada exists anymore either i think they shut down that studio i think they need to go back to basics and don't get me wrong there are other games that are trying to fill that void but it's not going to be the same and i know there's a lot of people that are like oh what about sean white snowboarding i'm sorry it's it's a good game but sean white snowboarding it's not ssx and i want to see it return if not i would like to see a remake or remaster similar to like a single kubasara hd collection if we go on the ps5 um ssx hd collection which was ssx one two three why not we can put in on tour as well so ssx tricky three on tour you know what what about blur if you could actually give like support for blur um controller support for blur as well i think a lot of people will buy it yay so please yay if you are listening we love you i'm just saying that because i really want a new ssx game I think that there is space in the gaming market for a new ssx because skate 4 is coming out and that's a game that basically a lot of people waited a decade for and ea confirmed it like two years ago that it's in development so Come on, EA. I know you could give us a new SSX. Let's make that happen. Let's wish it into existence. Now, I thought that was a great episode. I kind of shared my thoughts on SSX, gave you guys an overview. I really want to get a lot of other people on. If you know anyone within the SSX community, please reach out to me on Twitter at Get Life Podcast, as well as on Instagram. If you want to Instagram me, I don't know why you would, but please do. Or use our contact page on the website. Big shout out to the legends at Super Retro Bros as well. We love them. They've sponsored 
sponsored this episode of the podcast absolute legends go and check them out um and yeah let me know if you guys are interested in talking about ssx in the future because genuinely i would love it i'm always down to talk about ssx and you know what i'm gonna go and play it right now so see you guys bye oh wasn't that a great episode of galp it was wasn't it just as a reminder Big thanks to Super Retro Bros for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. You can check them out at superretrobros.org. Uh, you may have listened to them throughout the episode. They've got some really awesome stuff. Import requests, loyalty program, console bundles, everything that you need. What are you doing? The episode's finished. Go to superretrobros.org right now. Import some games. It's never been easier. Another thing that I thought was really cool about them is that they don't just deal with games. They deal with trading cards as well. They have a PSA service where they pre-screen, they provide card savers, they post it over to the PSA, and then they deal with all of that. So you don't need to. If you want to get your trading cards graded, they can sort it out so that you don't even need to deal with that. Let us know what games did you import from Super Retro Bros. Show it off. Let us know because we really want to know what you guys are buying as well. But let us know what games we should buy from them as well. If you guys do love Super Retro Bros, maybe we can do more collabs in the future and do a mini series where we unbox some weird and wonderful game variants from Japan and talk about them. Maybe something focusing on the Musou uh, series. Maybe something focusing on Sengoku Basara. Things like that. If that's something that you guys are interested, let me know. We can get that set up. And you know what? Thanks for supporting the podcast. And more so, thank you for supporting SuperRetroBros.org. They're really awesome people. We love them. And I'm sure you guys love them as well. Thank you guys for listening to this episode of the podcast. And we'll see you on the next episode.